Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and today we're doing another Monster Mash. So I thought we'd go back to the classic method of me being live on Twitch, and the Twitch community sending me a couple of different monsters and an attribute for me to mash together. So I'm gonna ask them for a few different animals. We're gonna have two different choices for animals and then some type of cool attribute like electricity or giant or some other really cool extra attribute and then we're gonna mash them all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask them for their suggestions and then we will vote and we'll see what we get today to mash. All right, so the votes are in, so let's go ahead and see what we have for our first animal. It was between a swordfish, a blue fairy wren, a prevost squirrel, I probably butchered the pronunciation of that, Dracula parrot, and box jellyfish. So the results are, oh my God, it's a three-way tie. You guys are ridiculous. <laughs> We're gonna have to probably do a tiebreaker for this one, but it was a tie between the swordfish, the prevost squirrel, and the box jellyfish. I'll send out a revote for that one, but let's move on to animal two. So we had either a goblin shark, a peacock bass, a colacanth, don't know what that is, a flying fox or a panda ant, and the results are a goblin shark. All right, so we got a goblin shark, we're good on that. Um, and then attributes, it was either a fairy, cursed, cave dwelling, deep sea, bioillumination combo, or parasitic, and the results are fairy. Oh my God, I wanna make a really gross, creepy fairy now because of Goblin Shark. But let's go ahead, let's do a revote between Swordfish, Squirrel, and Box Jellyfish. Okay, so we did a tiebreaker for the Swordfish, Box Jellyfish, and the Previs Squirrel. If this is a tie again, I'm gonna be deciding via dice. So let's go ahead and look at what the results are. Okay, thank God, Box Jellyfish won by one vote. So we're gonna do a Box Jellyfish combined with a Goblin Shark and make it a fairy. So my thought process is I'm thinking about making this um, like a humanoid-like fairy with the attributes of these two things. And I'm really excited. I, I'm really excited to make something super gross and like creepy with this goblin shark. So let's go ahead and jump in and get some sketches going. Okay guys, so we are done with these initial sketches and I am really all about these creepy, like goblin-like fairies. I'm really loving where this design is going. So the Twitch chat had a great idea of making these kind of amphibious. So I'm thinking about going with more of this water-based creation where they primarily live in water, but can spend their time outside of water just for a short amount of time, kind of like salamanders. They need to stay hydrated, but they are able to get out of the water and be like flying around for just little bits of time. So I'm kind of planning that its wings can kind of become propeller like fins underwater while they can also work outside of water, probably for short amounts of flying, but not very long. Um, and then I really like the idea of them having the longer tail here like the goblin shark, but I kind of like the idea of it having like the box jellyfish head, almost like a transitional skirt-like thing. We'll try that out and see how it works. And then instead of the head here being like a cap that the jellyfish makes, I really like the idea of the jellyfish tendrils being like hair. So I think that could work 
really well, and then the overall color and look of the body would match the body of the goblin shark. Either way, this thing is gonna be disgusting and creepy, and I'm really excited to jump in and try it out. So you've been warned. I'm gonna keep this safe for work and, you know, safe for all ages, but it's gonna be creepy. Just heads up. So let's jump in and get a final sketch started. So now it's time to jump in and finalize our very creepy goblin shark jellyfish fairy. And I was very excited to do this one. I, like I've said in previous videos, I really like creepy monsters. I think they're super cool and I just love designing them. I think that's kind of like a fun dream job is making more like horrific monsters. I love monsters overall, but I think doing creatures for like a horror game would be super fun. I think I would have a blast with that, just making some really cool and creepy monsters. So I was very excited to do this one and it was a kind of like a fun, twist on a creepy fairy or like, well, I guess more of a fun twist on a fairy. I really like in uh, like The Witcher, how they take certain things that we more romanticized and make it a lot more gritty and real. I think that's one of the reasons why I really like that game series in general. And in the expansion, um, I think it was in Blood and Wine. Yeah, in Blood and Wine, there's this side mission where you kind of basically go into a fairy tale and it's way darker and grittier. Like everything is like, it has the facade of a very nice, pleasant, traditional romantic fairy tale, but there's so many more like darker undertones and like actual like dark, uh, I guess, story elements to those fairy tales. And I really like that idea. So when I was, designing this fairy, I was talking to the Twitch chat a lot and we were kind of like brainstorming some really cool lore that could go along with this creature and like what would make this unique and different from like just a traditional fairy in mythology. Like how could we make this a really cool, unique new fairy? So my thought process along with some of the Twitch recommendations was first of all, um, I think these would be really interesting if when you first see them, they look like normal, I guess, beautiful fairies. From the land looking down into the water, maybe the magic that they exude or like the ripple effects from the water combined with their magic basically plays a trick on human eyes and minds to make them look beautiful and amazing and like majestic creatures. So you're not like afraid of them. And maybe they have an ability to lure humans in uh, to their rivers or lakes or ponds through that because maybe people have these lores and stories of like how fairies can grant wishes or do amazing things for humans if you just find them. So if you do find these, maybe you're inclined to go into the water and uh, commune with them or whatever. Um, or legitimately, it just has some type of um, magic like maybe kind of like how sirens have a song that like draws the viewer into the water. Once you're in the water though, I think it would take just a couple of seconds for you to really get a good look at these from underwater and just see how horrific, grotesque and creepy they are. And I love that idea. Once you're in the water, you're already surrounded. There's probably a whole like bunch of them just making circles around you, probably like stinging you with their jellyfish hair. And there was a really fun little point that I just feel is such a cool little detail. I can't remember who on Twitch, but someone mentioned the idea of um, the whole like body gives off a similar uh, feeling to a jellyfish sting. So just imagine all these little hands like grabbing you and clawing at you. And like the palms of their hands are just basically like jellyfish stings. So I love the idea of that because if a human survived, jellyfish stings leave marks for a while and sometimes they're like permanent, like scar, like marks. So imagine instead of just little jellyfish strands, there's all these like little clawed handprints all over the body of the victim. Like, whoa, man, that would be so creepy and like a really fun element to add to that. So that's kind of my thought process. This thing is at first from the surface, a very beautiful mythical looking fairy. 
Once you're in the water though, you instantly see how grotesque and horrifying and creepy they are. And then they basically drown their victims in large, uh, I guess, would you call it a hive of fairies? I don't know what a gathering of fairies is, but I'm just gonna say a hive, but, or a school because they're fish based. So a school of fairies basically drowns their victims and like stings them to death with using like their hands or like brushing up against with their tail or even just like engulfing with all these little hair strands of jellyfish tendrils all over the body. Like, woo, that would not be a fun way to go, but oh God, that would also make a really fun encounter in D&D. Like just imagine your adventurers are going through the forest and they come upon this like little oasis pool that just has these mythical glowing mushrooms and all this amazing surroundings. And they're like, oh, finally we find water and they have to make basically um, a wisdom saving throw to not be charmed. I think it's wisdom saving throw. I can't, okay, I'm probably, I think that's right. Anyway, they have to make a wisdom saving throw to not be charmed and lured into the water by these little devilish fairies. All right, guys, and we are all done with this creepy fairy creature, and I love it. This is such a really cool and creepy design. And just imagine being in the water with like a swarm of these around you. That would be terrifying. The Twitch stream had so many fun ideas for this in terms of like lore and stats, and I would love to drop this into my second creature compendium. So keep an eye out for when that book comes out, because this would be super sick to have in there. And a reminder, if you guys would like to get the Monster of the Month for my Patreon, go sign up before the end of April so you can get the exclusive creature that you guys saw last week. And uh, you'll get the lore and the stats and everything. And then every month you'll get a really cool creature to drop in your D&D games. But either way, thank you guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video. And if you aren't already, I'd really love if you hit that subscribe button, like this video, and leave a comment down below of any other cool like Monster Mash ideas you have or anything you'd like to see me do in the future. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody. So I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing and you're helping really fund this channel and potentially make this my career. So if you guys would like to support me, get the Patreon Monster of the Month, get sketch postcards, join the sticker club, go check out my Patreon. So thanks again guys so much and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.